Hey, I'm with Greg of Whiffies in Portland, Oregon. And uh, Greg, what's your reaction to CNN uh, saying that Portland's the hottest street food scene in the world? Um, uh, I'm obviously excited. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's great. You know, it's great to be recognized. It's great for the city. You know, I think you know. I think that part of the thing that makes I think that part of the deal that makes Portland so uh, accessible for food carts is that we have a great scene here. You know, we have great chefs, we have great food, urban growth boundary keeps farms close enough where we can get farms, you know, we can get farm fresh food all the time. Um, it's also a city full of innovative people. You know, we have, we have a bunch of the startup refugees, you know, the tech guys that came here to find a job, maybe couldn't find a job and figured out, hey, what else can I do with the ingenuity that I have? And I think that it, it worked out really well for everybody. You know, we also have a community that's super apt to try new things. We have the early adopter crowd here. Right. Um, we, you know what I mean? You look at, you look at the way that Twitter's used in other cities and it's like, yeah, everybody's using it for their, like, personal social circle, but in Portland it's like the entire city is like the social circle. I mean, if you're on Twitter, then you know what's going on with almost everyone else in this city on Twitter. And, you know, within three months you're connected to almost everyone. You follow the hashtag PDX? I do. Yeah, I think it's just like non-stop. All the time, you, follow, you know what I mean? All those, you know, there are a couple of those those hashtags that are, that are popular. You know, and we have we have dedicated, really dedicated bloggers in the city. We have Brett from Food Carts Portland. And you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Brett gets hit up now from like every person in every city that's trying to recreate our food cart scene in their city. He calls Brett Burmeister up and is like, "Hey, Brett, how do I do this?" Right, right. And Brett is like, you know. But you can you can trace all of this food scene way back to about 30 years ago when organically grown uh, co-op got started. When Oregon Tilth got started, they were the they were the first uh, uh, organic certification in the country. We live in Eden of North America here. You know, is that what you think partly drives what's happened? You know, with Anthony Bourdain saying that we're the hottest restaurant city in the world last summer, and now CNN Travel saying that we're the hottest street food scene in the world. Yeah, I think that the city. I think that in our, um, I think that in our downturn, you know, in our economic downturn, we've turned to eating as a way to create a new economy. Modern, you know what I mean? But it does. It, it stems from, you know, the passage of the urban growth boundary. It stems from, you know, the farm-to-table chef idea that. Well, it doesn't have its all of its roots here in Portland. Definitely impacted this city as much as it impacted Berkeley or San Francisco or Oakland or any of those kind of places. And it stuck more. You know, we have farms that are closer than in San Francisco. You know, we have truly local food. Within a hundred miles, you can get what you need to eat. Right. Period. Right. And we've had chefs that have embraced that, and we had innovative chefs. You know, we had Naomi and Michael from Gotham Tavern and Beast. And, yep. You know, really doing, you know what I mean? Like their their thing in their house was kind of from the same standpoint of the food cart in that, like, they didn't have the money for the startup. You know what I mean? They're like, look, this is what we can do right now. And it's, you know, does it, does it run on the outskirts of the law? Kind of. But Portland is full of pirates. And, Mercenaries. Mercenaries, you know. <laughs> you know, we can get the yeah. reputation as the People's Republic of Portland for nothing, you know. Uh, and keep it weird. Yeah, I mean, we, we're an innovative city that's, that's full of innovative people who want to try new things. Right. And it's, it's working out for us right now. Right. That uh. weird thing is working out really well for us. Tell me about uh, your thoughts on how the food scene, the street food scene in particular, may create deeper community uh, in Portland, may create villages that weren't, aren't there in other cities. Hmm. Um, 
Does it bring people together? I mean, you're here every night until 3 a.m. You must, you know, have a pretty dynamic crowd going to stay open until 3 a.m. This is the craziest social experiment in Portland. It's right here. It's right here. Yeah. I mean, if you come down here between like 10 and 3, you'll see. Well, and it, actually, if you came at 6 o'clock, you know what I mean? I tend to think of. You know what I mean? Diversity is the, the, the sort of weird people, but like, if you came at six o'clock, you would see the family scene. You would see the bridge and tunnel crowd and the family scene. And if you came at eight o'clock, you would see sort of like the later version of that crowd. And by ten o'clock, it's sort of the like the young, the young kids who are coming in from sort of further out. And as it gets closer and closer to three a.m., it starts to get closer and closer to where we're at right now. And at three a.m., you know, between like. 11 and 3, it's like the super close in Southeast Portland. Cool. Yeah. And so, I mean, this this really gives you a very good sense of the, you know what I mean, people will criticize the lack of diversity in Portland, but what diversity we do have, you'll see here. Sweet. Okay. Um, and I think that as we get more of these sort of food cart lots that are designed to be food cart lots. This, this one sort of sprung up out of nothing. Right. But as we get, you'll start to see them take on their own character. Mississippi Marketplace has its sort of thing. You know, whatever whatever that thing is. But when you go up there, you get that sense of it. When you go to North St North Station or... Yeah, Alder Street and... No, the, or the, the, other one? the one in on Greeley and Killingsworth. Okay. Hmm. I think it's called North Station. It has its own sort of funky feel, you know what I mean? It feels like that neighborhood. When you get out here in these two new pods that are gonna be out on 50th, one on Belmont and one on Division, you can already sort of get the sense that they have the feel of the neighborhood, you know what I mean? They're sort of taking on the, the, the flavor of that neighborhood. Which is cool because it gives, you know what I mean? It helps to define Portland's identity. And I don't think define is the right word, but it helps to like, Expands flavor of each of these neighborhoods. It's more organic. I feel like some of these new neighborhoods that have just sprung up, they were forced. forced you know what I mean? Like gentrification and the, the, the bringing. You know, the, the, the massive influx of outsiders who had an idea of what the neighborhood should be and sort of built it around their idea are now having it expand into a more organic Cool. So besides your own truck, what's your favorite? Or are you going to go on record saying that? Yeah. I eat it a lot of these products on a very regular basis, and I'd be happy to like list the like top 10 parts I eat at all the time. Okay, we got 40 seconds. Um, <laughs> Koi Fusion, Saber Soup House, uh, flavor Spot, Grilled Cheese Grill, Potato Champion, uh, Garden State, Oregon Ice Worker, the ones I can think of off the top of my head that I eat at at least twice a month at each of those places. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much. You're welcome, Jeff. All right, see you.